For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is faithful. God is faithful and true to the word of God. What God has said and what God has recorded in his word will faithfully happen. And if it has not happened yet, prophecy will happen. Jesus is coming. He will come one day and take his bride and event what we call the rapture. Only those that are saved will be called out. If the rapture were to happen right now, you will find an empty seat. You'll find the amplification system will be falling to the ground. And the cameras will be recording to the battery dies. And I will be in the clouds with the brethren who are also saved. That Jesus said the graves will open first. And then those that remain shall be caught up together in the clouds. And then we all together shall go and see Jesus. Jesus is not going to touch the earth at the rapture. There is no way for someone to say today, well, I want to see Jesus. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And I know churches have got the videos, they got the movies, they got the plays. Churches today, what you can see, but that's not scripture. It's what you can hear. That there's one great event, at least for the Christian is that Jesus will come and he will come again. And he will call away his bride, the church. Only those that are saved. If you have rejected Jesus Christ, if you had trusted anything but Jesus, you're not going, dead or alive. You'll remain, and then you'll have the period called the tribulation period. The time of Jacob's trouble, not the church, not the Gentile. And if you think President Biden's bad, and he is, I'll agree with you on that. You wait till the Antichrist is unleashed. Now the Antichrist is going to give you at least three and a half years plus or minus. He's going to give you peace. The four horses of the apocalypse. The first horse is peace. The Antichrist. He will solve your Afghanistan problem. He will take over the Syrian crisis. He will deal with the conflicts and the wars and all the troubles in America. I don't know how. I won't be here, but he will give peace. He will give peace to those where black lives matter and those where white lives matter. He will give peace to the police and those that want to defund the police. I don't know how. He will take over the world government. He will be the one world leader. But you see, the Christians won't be here for that. You know, they say, don't take the shot. I have. I've taken both shots for COVID-19. And it's not the mark of the 666, even if it was. 
the Christian do not suffer the, the mark of the beast. We're gone. We're in heaven. Maybe being judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We will escape the Antichrist. We will escape the mark of the beast. We will escape all the horrors of the book of Revelation and the woes. Because we have put our faith and trust and you can too in the blood of Jesus Christ. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Not only saved from hell, saved from the tribulation period, saved from the lake of fire, and it's all by believing on Jesus. I don't care about the tribulation period. I won't be here. I don't care about the mark of the beast. I'm not going to be here for that. Because I have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses from all sin. Christ will call his bride out before any of that other satanic activity. There is coming a time that not only did Jesus redeem his people, but he will call out his people from the destruction of Satan himself. And you too can be part of the church by being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't say come to church. That's a weak Christian Come to church. Come to church. Well, what if Jesus Christ came for his bride this afternoon? And you didn't make it to church. What if death prevented you from church? A car accident. You couldn't make it. You overslept the alarm clock. Or you got to the church and the doors were closed because of COVID-19. What if you could not make church? And yet, I tell you, church is not what saves you. You can go to church all you want. You can be as faithful to church and still die and go to hell. Because in church is not salvation. And there are people who are in hell today and there are people who are going to go to hell And they were faithful church members, church attendees. They were deacons, Sunday school teachers, even pastors. And are you mocking church? I'm not mocking. Church is not salvation. Church, the biblical definition is a group of people who have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are either in Christ or you are lost. And the Bible says that Jesus came to seek that which is lost. You're not going to get before God's throne one day and declare Jesus I went to church and I'll tell you Adolf Hitler went to church too I can tell you six years of prison ministry I know of a murderer who went to church
Matter of fact, most of your heinous crimes by my prison ministry, your heinous crime offenders, criminals, are those who know the doctrine. To know the Bible and biblical facts can't save you. So preacher, if church can't save you and knowing the Bible can't save you, what must I do to be saved? And the answer according to the book of Acts 16.31 Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Take the scriptures, the Bible, not tradition, not what the pastor says, not what the, the, the priests say, not what man says. What saith the scriptures? Because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, Jesus said, shall never pass away. Your traditions will burn up when the world goes big bang. Your manly traditions will be thrown into the lake of fire. But the word of God stands forever. And I'm here to tell you that in the Bible, there was one man that got saved. And he never went to church. He might have went to temple, but... And the Bible tells us he was a thief. He stole. And he's in heaven today, according to the scriptures. And he didn't go to church and he stole. And he was caught by the government. And guilty. So a thief got caught, is condemned, is guilty, and he's going to heaven. And is in heaven today. There is hope for the politicians. And the only hope is in Jesus Christ. Because <clears throat> this man I'm talking about had no church. And yet today, now, is in heaven. This man was condemned. He was guilty. And he declared his guilt. He didn't hide his guilt. He didn't say, well, my mother made me do it. <clears throat> I grew up in the ghetto. My parents were Democrats. No, this man, in his guilt, declared that he was guilty of his sin. He was guilty of his crime. And he didn't take a red pill, a blue pill, he took the faith and belief in Jesus Christ alone. And the Bible records this man is in heaven. This man never had an opportunity to be baptized. Not once did he take a drop of water before he was saved or after he was saved. With no baptism being recorded, no church attendance, guilty of his sin and crime, the Bible says that that man is in heaven today. And this man He actually got to see the physical Jesus Christ, which I have never. He looked upon Jesus Christ. 
and he repented to Jesus Christ. And he put his hope and belief in Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you another thing that's remarkable about this man. That he, without church, without baptism, guilty of his sin and crime, looking upon Jesus for salvation, believing on Jesus Christ to save his soul. This man also witnessed to one other man. And proclaim to the other man, we are guilty. We deserve what we are getting. The cross. Crucifixion. But this man in the middle has done no wrong and no sin. So this dying thief on the cross tells others Everybody within an earshot that we are guilty of sin and Jesus Christ is sinless. And that man on the cross looked to Jesus Christ on the cross and he said to Jesus, without church, Without baptism, without hope, and he's going to die. He says, Jesus, remember me. When thou enter into thy kingdom. Now remember that Jesus had not died yet, so we're not in the church age. And Jews require looking to a kingdom, not the Christian. So in the hope of a Jew lost, looking for a kingdom, he looked to Jesus the king and said to King Jesus of the Jews, I am guilty of my crime. No church attendance, no baptism, but faith and belief in Jesus, and he witnesses to the other dying thief. And Jesus today, he said, thou shalt be with me in paradise. And today, I can't even say the dying thief I can't say that. You know, everybody says the dying thief on the cross, and then yet you're twisting the scriptures. Because if he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then when Jesus Christ died and shed his blood, that dying thief became no more thief. The thief and the sins and the crimes of that man were they not washed in the blood? So he's not the, the, the thief on the cross. He's the child of God next to the son of God on the cross. And that man on Abed 14, 6 p.m. Enter into the realm of eternal life through the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. He didn't go to a priest. He didn't go to the Pope. He didn't have no watchtowers. He didn't put on a fancy outfit and got on his bike. 
He didn't cross his legs and face Mecca. He didn't pick up a sword and behead anybody. No, that man on the cross believed on the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the King of the Jews that Pilate wrote. And he looked upon Jesus and he said, Remember me when thou enterest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now let me tell you what Jesus did not say. Jesus did not say to that man that repented, go to church. Jesus did not say that. Now a Baptist, in his Baptist Matthew, chapter 437, verse 8 of the Baptist handbook, we say, go to church. Go to this denomination. Our church is all the church. Welcome to the house of God. That's the Baptist. I'm a born again, Bible believing, Christian, old time Methodist Baptist, if you want to know what I am. Baptists are high and proud of themselves. That's not a Christian. But Jesus did not, did not tell that thief, go to church. He did not tell him. What Jesus did not do that afternoon of the Passover, he did not. Oh, stop the crucifixion. Hey, Romans, stop it. This man's got to be baptized. Take him down, get him baptized. Come on, take him down off that cross, get him baptized. That was not happened, that did not say by Jesus. That dying thief on the cross that is redeemed, that's no longer a thief, that's in heaven today, did not go to church, and he was not baptized. And Jesus said, today thou shalt see me in paradise. What do you do with that, Catholic? The dying thief did not eat and drink the body of Jesus. Those right there on the cross. Jesus did not say on the cross, well, here, here's my pinky. Eat it. Here's my kidney. Eat it. Jesus did not take a, a, and cut a piece of his flesh off and hand it to you too. And hand it to the thief and say, here, eat my body. He didn't say that. And he did not tell that thief, well, here's a cup. Grab some of my blood and drink it. He did not tell the thief. He did not give his body and he did not give his blood for that thief to eat and drink. And Jesus said to that dying thief, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That knocks off the mass. So don't believe the Catholics. And listen, I was 18 years a Polish Roman Catholic before I got saved. I know about their nonsense. And I thank God as a, as a young boy in a Catholic church, I was not involved with those priests and the altar boy. And thank God for protecting me from those sinners. You put a Catholic priest right here, right now, I'll tell it right to his face. What else Jesus did not say or do for that dying thief that was redeemed, that was washed, that's in heaven. They didn't call upon the priest for the last rites to be read to that, priest, to that thief. There was no Roman Catholic priest, no Pharisee, no Sadducee gave that thief his last rites. And yet the Bible records he's in heaven today without the last rites. Kind of interesting when you take tradition up against the scripture. 
And I know many Baptists who twist the scripture with their little stories, their little traditions. And that they will twist the scripture so they can get the congregation to laugh. The only ones laughing at the Calvary site were those who were laughing and mocking Jesus. But you know, the church has got to have fun. To off quote Moses in Hebrews, he strove with the children of Israel and took the scorning and beating and rather than enjoyed the pleasures of sin for a, for a moment. Church, your pleasures of fun is only a moment. And it won't get your reward. Now we have one advantage over that dying thief that was redeemed that's in heaven. That man saw the man Christ Jesus. I have never seen Jesus yet, yet, yet. I will one day. That dying thief that was redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross. Take some of the church teachings and traditions and wipes them clean. That the Bible says to those that are saved, a child of God through Jesus, born and washed, the Bible says, by the one that redeemed us, our Savior, says, in red letter writing, if you have a red letter Bible, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Not one book, one verse, of the King James Bible from Acts to Revelation and the Gospels did it say come to church. Nowhere does it say a great church. We got a great pastor. We are called to preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved that is the scripture 